Gregory John Norman. This man has won 88 professional tournaments, including 28 PGA tournaments and two majors. He was world's number one golfer for 331 weeks. That is crazy. And if that has not impressed you yet, his nickname is the Great White Shark. That's absolutely terrifying. Although this man does not know it yet, he will be miraculously fixing my swing because today I learned the legendary Greg Norman drill. Not only that, but also my coach teaches me how to make my swing more athletic and absolutely blows my mind. Boom. That was a perfect. How to actually hit down on my irons. To the great white shark, this video is for you. One thing that I kind of want to talk about is like, I feel like after lesson for me, it's like really good at like feel something and I'm like, okay, I'm going. Yeah. And then I'll like do it for four days in a row and then I try to add something new and then, and then I forget that previous feel. Yeah, why, what was that and why did you do that? I was doing the same things, but what I wanted to add was essentially like this, the feeling for supination. Okay, that's palmar flexion. Palm reflection? Yeah, so okay. supination is just okay. you turning the forearm oh, over. Okay. The problem with palm reflexing your wrist, yeah. um, does the angle of my wrist to the shaft, does it increase or decrease? When you go this way? Yeah, where's the shaft going? Decreasing? It's away from me, right? Oh, because yeah, yeah. Yeah, so if I go to the top and I try to objectively throw the wrist into flexion, yeah. this angle gets wider. Mm -hmm. Now, that could be good or bad. Yeah. Like, I don't know, we didn't film it, look at it. Yeah. But we gotta be careful because not all golfers do that. Yeah. Some do, mm -hmm. but this might also take away some of the loading of the shaft. Yeah, that's what I was kind of seeing. Like, when I was doing that, I was also just like casting the club. Like, the Yeah, we don't do that. Yeah, yeah, that's the reason why. So if you start to take the wrist, and you start to throw it into flexion or yeah. palm reflection, the angle between the left arm and the shaft goes like that. Okay. And that could send the club behind. Okay, because I was chunking everything. Yeah, you don't wanna do that. Okay, yeah. that's what I was like, I don't know if I'm doing this correctly because you know we wanted to kind of get here. Um, so yeah, that so, this is closer. so what needs to happen, like I would just feel the lead arm and the lead wrist down towards the bottom go that way. So nothing with the wrist? Or, I well, mean, the not wrist the... will go, it will head into flexion. Yeah but you don't try to do it from the top. Cause see how that's just kicking away from me? Okay, yeah, I was spending a days doing that. I was like, yeah. this doesn't that's seem okay. right That's at okay, all. that's why we have lessons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, and so in any event, once you hit, I'll, yeah. I'll film where we are. Okay, cool. One positive, and hopefully this still resonates, <laughs> is that the path is always right. It'll always go right. <laughs> okay, that's good, that's <laughs> and good. I'm drawing it, but like, I don't know if I'm doing it right. <laughs> like the way, right way. And also remember, you have a strong grip. Yeah. So if you have a strong grip like this, and then you add flexion, you just shut the face more. Yeah, and it feels, yeah, that's when I was like, oh, this doesn't seem right at all, because this would go so left. Yeah. And then also when I was trying to do it up here, it seems like I was just losing the handle, like, of the yeah. club, and it was like I couldn't hit it, and yeah. everything was pretty okay. bad. Yeah. Let's try to do what we were doing before. Okay. Um, you just kind of hit, okay? okay best that you can okay so let's recall the backswing piece because this is important yeah. so what was the first thing on the backswing that we had to do like this yep left shoulder moves more to the right right so yeah. feel like your left shoulder moves more behind like, the ball feeling like this yep yeah. so go ahead and set up so feel like this turns more to here okay go ahead and do that and stop there, good. So we want this to be more right and this to be more left. Okay. Got That's it. number one. Yeah. Okay. Because otherwise the upper body is too far forward, yeah. which is going to make it down and possibly more left on it. Okay. Got it. Tremendous. Very good. Do that again. And yeah, so right now I think the idea of like trying to correct, figuring out what to correct right now is not like, oh, I think this is why I'm chunking it and yeah. I'm doing it incorrectly. For example, I was doing that a lot and then I was like, good, good, good. And then I started chunking it. I was like, maybe because I'm not closer to here. And <laughs> right, well, so that, that's kind of the, the issue. So yeah. 
we got to know what your tendencies are. So yeah. like we did an evaluation the first day. The big thing that kind of stuck out was that the upper hub was too far forward. Yeah. The lower hub was too far right. Like, and your stance was narrow. Like if I recall everything, that's yep. kind of what was going on. So now you have a better base. You still want to turn behind it, but if the bottom goes bad, remember you threw a piece in there that was kind of causing that. You were actually like throwing the head out. Yeah. That's going to hit the ground. So that doesn't mean get the upper hub forward to make contact. Because once you do that, you lose turn and you could swing more left and down on it. You can't get it in the air. Okay, yeah. So especially as the club gets longer. Yeah, like I was like, five iron is not in play right now. Yeah, that, and it should. It should. Yeah. Okay, so same upper shoulder, the whole nine. Cool. So let's just look at that, because that's kind of what's been going on. So I would say, like, overall, things look pretty decent. Um, definitely, this is throwing away. Yeah. Address. Everything looks good. So your tilts look good. Your setup looks good. Take away going forward see how it's like 0 0.3 0 0.3 yeah and then halfway back lead arm you're even more forward mm. so everything is going that way that's okay. bad not ideal yeah and then at the last minute it goes back it goes back yeah i was seeing that and i was like i don't know if this is right or not and then from there, everything kind of turns. So your chest starts to spin. Yeah. See so how your chest is getting more open? Yeah. And then you have to stand up. Even though your numbers are good, yeah, you kind of stand up on it a little bit, hit the yeah. ground. Yeah, so this is an interesting one because you're actually going, this is the problem when, like if you weren't, as, if you weren't an athlete and I just kept you on your left foot and I made you turn, you could probably hit it. Be yeah. Fine. Problem is you're an athlete, so you, you intuitively know to get pressure back into your trail side. So we want to use that. We can't mm -hmm. discredit that. So I want you on this one to feel like you go right and then left earlier. Okay. But also but same setup. Same everything. Yeah, okay, setup's cool. great. Yeah, that's what I was seeing as well. I was like, when I'm starting on here and I'm going back, I end up going forward like this yeah, yeah. just because of like my natural turn, but yeah. And your okay. brain won't like that. It'll want to shift back to the left. Yeah. Um, okay. okay. So basically like this, but then instead of going out, coming back in. Yeah. So do it. Um, I'm going to give you a little different cadence. So take your setup. Okay. So I want you to feel shift right first. Now take it back. And then right about lead arm parallel as you turn, then shift left. Okay, so it's like this. You're gonna go shift right, turn, and as you get about halfway back, shift back left. And it doesn't mean like lunge forward, just turn and allow your pressure to go forward. Okay, I'm just doing practice swing. Yep, that's better. Do that nice and smooth, you don't need to go fast at that. So a little shift right, then turn. There you go, okay. Better, again. Okay, trending. Okay, one more time. So shift before the club moves. So like oh, this shift is the- shift before this. Yeah, so like your pattern, and even probably in the gym, yeah. you wanna get this pattern under control. This is like everything. Because if you don't do this, you're gonna use your hands off the ball, okay, which we wanna kinda quiet down. So yeah. if you look at your swing, you look like you kinda hinge the club. Yeah. Right? And what we call that is you using the kinematics of your mechanics to move the club and not your dynamics okay or quote unquote kinetics mm -hmm. so when you get in here you don't go like this you actually shift pressure and then the club gets thrown back Oh, I okay. see. That's kind of the secret. But before we go into that secret and other hidden secrets from the greatest coaches in the world, show me I can trust you with secrets by liking and subscribing to this channel. I will always give you guys, S2 Nation, the greatest coach content, greatest golf content for free. But you know what else is free? Liking and subscribing. So quick, click those two buttons below. Thanks very much. Back to the lesson. Yeah. Now, some people that's a little tough to do. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming not for you because you're kind of doing the opposite. You're going like this and then go. Okay. I want you to shift right, throw it back and land left. Okay. So a little shift right, there you go. Good job. Okay, let's look at that. That was great. So under the context of like your mechanics, they're still the same. Like yeah. we're not trying to 
to change anything, but you have to learn. And this is the problem kind of with the industry. Yeah. The industry is solely looking at mechanics. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, well, yeah, you're in the right spot. Well, you could look in the right spot and chunk it. Yeah. And that's a problem. Like, yeah. that's not your goal. Your goal is to stripe it. So you have to get the right cadence going as you do this. Okay. And that might appear to look as tempo or sequencing or whatever vocabulary you want to kind of throw at it. Yeah, Let's... because right now, like, I'll film myself and I was like, this seems like I'm getting in the right spots, but I'm chunking it. So then I'm like... Yeah. I don't know how to correct this. Yeah, because your sequence is off. Yeah. yeah. So now we're just going to kind of layer priority into this right here. Yeah. Okay. So the first thing that we talked about was getting a shift into your system. So that shift is not coming from the weight of the club. Mm. Okay. So some individuals say, well, shifting of pressure is due to the fact that my arms are away from the center of my body. That sounds good, but it's not actually happening. Okay. Mm. What's actually happening is the individual is actually moving pressure on the ground. Yeah. I'm not saying go Kyle Berkshire. Yeah. Okay. But just mm -hmm. a little left, a little right, then the object moves. Yeah. And to me, like, look how I did that and my hands are kind of docile. Yeah. Right. So that's the first piece. And so now when you kind of move, you're at zero here and you've shifted right a half inch. Watch this. See, see how you moved an inch off the ball? Yeah. Very first move. So now the hands are a lot quieter. They're not as hingy. Oh, I see. See how they're wider? Yeah. So to me, this is the first check mark you gotta have. Okay. Very first thing. Because if you don't have that, you're pulling the athlete away. Okay. Okay, then you're as far right as you're ever gonna be when the club is parallel to the ground. Mm -hmm. So I can't stress enough how important this is. Okay. So you're here. So right here, max, pressure is in the ground yep and maybe like 80 percent of my pressure is over here from that point it's not increasing okay, mm, okay. it's actually zeroing back so segmentally you'll see your body is going back to zero see that yeah so it went from one inch to the right inch and a half half of an inch and now back to zero so now at the top you're green so now you're centered. Okay, got it. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Very interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> now the pressure will spike left. Now see how you slam left? Yeah. So that's great. Now your chest is a little bit too far forward still. Mm. See that? It's an inch more in front of the pelvis. Or this way? But that's your tendency. Yeah, that's why the ball's low. Okay. okay. So we want to keep feeding the right information in here. And then when we look here, chest bend, looks good so you know pretty darn good just the whole series of the upper axis is too far forward and then when you come down your chest gets a little covered see your chest is open yeah so you want to actually put a little more side bend in there oh, i see okay so then that means like when i'm trying to shift my weight back here it's not this no. it's just like this this and then this is still kind of back it. kind of more closed feeling yeah but to you and it just depends on the individual and yeah. it also depends on the pattern yeah so you know if you're matt wallace versus rory McRoy, that's a different pattern yeah they both work yeah but you have to like stay in the you have to make sure your pattern which to me for you would be like a little draw pattern yeah um they all line up mm -hmm. okay so take your setup i'm going to give you part two so you're going to do that same pattern but your left shoulder is going to move more to the right left shoulder is going to move over here yeah. okay. that's the that's part two Good. Okay. Get, it, get it to touch this up. Oh, this. There you go. Good. Now, as you feel that, we're going to talk a little bit about your core. Okay. Okay. Because I think it needs to be addressed. Okay. It appears to me that you have a core. Okay. Like you work out and all mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. Yeah. Okay. So if my sternum moves away from my belly button, this is extension. Mm -hmm. Okay. Watch what happens to my spine. I'll face the cameras over here. If I turn and I extend my sternum early, the upper rib cage goes in front of the pelvis. Mm -hmm. You're doing a little bit of that. Okay. So I want you to feel that this and this stay a little more connected as you turn, and i.e., this is exaggerated, but the upper axis is more right of the lower axis. Oh, I see. Okay, and okay. you need a little bit of that. Okay. okay. So go and show me that. There you go, good. And then, just and then slam. 
Cool. Okay, so you're going to do one of those. Go ahead. Okay. Ten. Very good. Okay, now that didn't go high yet, did it? Yeah. Okay. So, three. So now we're going to add the last piece. So you only have three things to monitor. What's the first one? This move, where it's like shifting my weight here is before the club. Correct. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so that's a medial lateral shift. Yeah. Okay, so that pressure shift will get the engine primed to movement, mm -hmm. okay? Second piece is what? This, rather than going like this, it's kind of just that. Turned and keeping connection in your core to pelvis yeah. length. Yeah. Oh, so, okay, so this is kind of just constant the entire time. Yeah, okay. so if we were to like, if we were to take like the master class on this, yep. okay, and we were looking actually in like the long drive space, mm -hmm. okay, the long drivers, things that they do are more apparent because there's more motion inherently there. Yeah. Okay. You will typically see long drive players have more connection for longer yeah. in their golf swings and maybe even tour players. Because mm -hmm. there are tour players that overextend. Yeah. Okay. But it doesn't mean it's the norm. Yeah. Okay. Um, they're just really good at making contact. Okay. So it doesn't really matter what they do. Yeah. But for you, you need to keep the distance from this the closest as long as you can so this doesn't go like that. Okay. Got it. And how do you, I guess, uh, get your weight on the left foot properly? If it, it's like this, and then you just... So your lower center, being that it's more forward than this, will yeah. land left. So the, through the process of rotation, mm -hmm. so I go boom, turn, I keep winding, my pressure's landing. And you're going to use that right pressure, because this is actually a good topic. Yeah. Okay? So there's this term thrown around called ground reaction force. Mm -hmm. You probably heard like GFR before, um, not Guns N' Roses, that's a different <laughs> term. Um, but ground, ground reaction force is you applying a force into the ground that helps you react to it. Yeah. That's all it is. So if I don't shift, it's really hard for me to create a reaction properly. Mm. So when I shift right and I turn, that shift actually pushes me back. Got it. But it's not like... Like this. No, it's not that. It's you have to get rid of that. This. It's that. Oh, I see. You have to get good at that. Okay, got it. Because if you don't, everything's going to feed over the top and kind of low. Okay. Okay, now, the final thing, this is all you have to do, it's three things, and you're mm -hmm. not adding to this anymore. Okay, okay. okay. Not doing that. Is when pressure goes into your lead side early, yeah. it will reduce rotation of the upper body mm. in a horizontal fashion. Okay. Right, what do you mean by that? Oh, it's a good one. Okay, so if I go to the backswing and my hips are to the right, my pressure is right, and I've extended, and yep. I keep my pressure right too long, my shoulders want to rotate like a, like a merry-go-round. Oh, I see, yeah. They want to work this way. Mm -hmm. Not good for push draws, kind of good for a pull slice yeah. or a low ball. So what I need you to do is as you kind of feed the system this way and land left, that pressure landing left mm -hmm. is going to create a vertical force, yeah. which causes the Ferris wheel effect in your body. Yep. It'll cause you to work more this way. Yeah. Well, that's going to make the path work more to the right. Okay. Okay. Now, can't do that off your back foot. Yeah. Okay. Sure. So if you watch Scotty Shuffler, even though he looks like he comes in and then out, mm -hmm. he goes whoo, that way and he shallows it out and it creates a net zero. Got it. Got it. I'm not asking you to do all that, yeah, yeah, yeah. but just keep it simple. <laughs> okay. All right, so run that secondary field. So then once I'm here, like this, this. Land, and, and you then, push. Should I just, could I, should I just like push up like this? Push vertical. Yeah. And sideways. Oh, like, like that. Yeah, underneath it. Okay. So you're going to feel like actually your shoulders are working like a Ferris wheel. Got it. That was a good lesson. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see if we can hit it now. Um, just also the same. S oh, setup. all the same. Yeah. yeah, same tilt, side bend. It's all right. So that was a round. I want you to side bend. I'll give you a drill for that. Okay. So do people like go crazy in order to get here? Like, uh, in, in, I mean, like. I don't mind it. I'd rather you go the other side of it. Like, if people only went this much, how do people kind of get there? They um, just force it. Well, I wouldn't do that. I would try to max out your range. Yeah and exaggerate what you're trying to feel. Okay. Pure. Okay, there's your draw. That was nice, yeah. good job. We're gonna triple the height. Triple the height? Yep, okay, let me jump in there for a minute. Okay. All right, so this is your drill. 
This is called a Greg Norman drill. Yeah. Okay, so what Greg Norman did is he hit out on the ball pretty shallow and launched it really high. Mm -hmm. Okay, so in order to do <clears> that, pressure has to get into the lead side early. That doesn't mean slide it. Mm. See how I'm just sliding forward? Yeah. That means I do the same protocol, I rotate, land left, and then from here I apply a vertical force. Okay. Okay, that vertical is pushing up, which is going to side bend me and watch my right foot. It actually works behind me. And as that occurs, when my foot goes this way, see how I can tilt? Yeah. See how my arms are going over here? Yeah. Go ahead and feel that. Okay. Just do a practice swing like that. Greg, this is for you. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out, Greg. So what would that feel like? Just this, this. Oh. Yep, and then feel more side, arms higher. There you go. Ooh, Jesus. Yeah, don't worry. Do it slow a few times. Just like this, and then. There you go. Yeah. So if I was going to smash a two iron off a tee over a tree, yeah. that's how I would do it. Got it. Okay. I wouldn't go like this. Yeah. Because I would just wipe it. Got it, got it. Should I have that feeling for all my clubs? All of them. Okay. Yeah. Let's try Wow. See, the problem is I just hit really good shots here. <laughs> <laughs> That's everybody's problem. <laughs> so uh, what do you think part of that is, though? I don't Why know. is it when you show up with your car, when you take your Porsche Cayenne Turbo GTS or whatever it is, <laughs> that, that shows I don't have a Porsche because <laughs> that probably doesn't even exist. The check engine light doesn't turn on, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's the wrong timing. Well, when you come here, there is a little bit of like you're in the bumper lanes. So yeah. when you take lessons, you're in those bumper lanes and you're a little more confident. And plus, like, there's no, like, issue with you hitting a ball right now. You could hit it bad or hit it good. And, like, you're okay. I'm still here. Yeah. So there's a little bit of that going on. Yeah. But also, like, I'm keeping you in a directive. Yeah. That's the hard part with lessons is, like, your experience. Like, I thought, looking at your video, everything was great. And then yeah. you show up and you're like, well, Dana, like I put like on the Porsche, like these 33 inch mud flap tires. Yeah. And that ain't gonna work, <laughs> yeah. right? So just kind of stay in your lane on this. You'll okay. be fine. Got it, got it. Yeah, after that day, that video, I was like, man. That looked good. I was like, this is a good swing. And then I, I couldn't get back to that. Uh, but um, yeah, I kind of want to try also a long iron just cause I feel like. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I haven't been able to replicate feels on longer irons. Same feel on that backswing and then Greg Norman it. Man, I didn't take long. Wow, I mean, that's very surprising. <laughs> okay, let's just not camp on an eight iron. Yeah. Just take out your five iron and actually get a T because uh, you're not going to break the T, okay? Yeah. Also, oh. guys, before this lesson, I destroyed my seven iron. It exploded, so you <laughs> can't use it here. <laughs> Okay, so we'll tee one up like right here. Um, we'll go white flag. I'm gonna take the eight iron. Okay, so most important thing, as the club gets longer yeah. for you, play the ball a little more forward okay. than yeah. you're used to. So good. Have more right side bend at setup. So a little more right shoulder lower. Good. Real important that you feed more information of this on the backswing and more Greg Norman on this one. Cause I want these things launched. Okay. And you're not allowed to break the tee. Yeah, okay, so you're going to sweep it. Oh. Okay, destroyed the T. <laughs> <laughs> it's a commonality. Not bad motion, though. All right, let's see. So let's tee it up. I'm tee also going to just move it. Tee it up where? Oh, did, was that even on a T? <laughs> no, it wasn't. Yeah, it was, it was imaginary. <laughs> yeah, so we're just going to tee it up like really, really low, and we're going to clip it. So there's okay. going to be no breaking of the T. What's going to help you do that is the more that I get, you know, this feeling right, this feeling forward, land, and then push, it's yeah. going to send my arms more up and out to the right. How, how high do you put tees for? Kind of like that for training. Okay, for training. I would go a skosh lower for normal. Okay, got it. So more, we call it right side bend or axis tilt in some camps. Ball a little more forward. There we go. Now to the moon, you're going to side bend and extend and Greg Norman it. Wow. Hello. Oh, man. Smashy. Jeez. <laughs> so that was double the height. Yeah. Right? That's crazy. So let's kind of run through that. What is that? 
that vertical, okay, is basically you can call it leg extension. Yeah. You can call it body extension, like whatever vocabulary you want to use. Like mm -hmm. they're all right. Yeah. But you're applying a vertical force early, which is going to take the wheel and tilt it feeling this way. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now for a tour player, I might not give him that input. Yeah. That's the reality because Wyndham Clark, if he does this, he's not going to hit his tight cut. Yeah. But for people that struggle hitting it in the air and drawing it, probably mm -hmm. a good feel. So you feel this and this so you can hit up and out on it more. And then oh, there's your high draw. Driver yeah. three wood gets impressively better. Okay. If you do that. this. Yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. But you're going to train with a long iron doing it. Okay. Okay. Got and it. then let's do that again. Very, very nice. On the Tegan? Yep. Oh, yeah. So it's a drill, so you got to do more than one. <laughs> I'm perfect. It's perfect already. <laughs> so upper hub is more right. Kind of show me what that would feel like at the top. Like make uh, it gross. More. Like feel like your head is over there. Look at this. There you go. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then Greg Norman it. Exactly. Push sideways. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like uh, yep, arms down the line. As much in there as you humanly want to do. Okay, good. That was, you need to swing harder. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to. That was good though. Do it again. I need to like. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> that was uh, 119 miles per hour with a five iron. Oh, yeah, I know. That's my problem. I just tried to hit it. Send it. All right, let me just... Same go. input, you have your side bend. Upper hub is more right than the lower hub, and then Greg Norman it through the ball. Smooth. Unbelievable. Welcome to Push Draw City. Yeah, that's nice. That's nice. Okay. Take a look at that. Okay. That was rad. Yeah, that was pretty job. good. So it's not that hard. Yeah. <laughs> okay, it's really not. You'd really, and I think this is, it's good you're getting more than like one or two lessons. Like, so here's what's interesting. Your first lesson with your pro, mm -hmm. I'm talking to the world right now. Yeah. It's a, it's a mutual evaluation of what's going on. Mm -hmm. The second one, I understand your personality and your habits. Yeah. The third one, is very interesting because you're you, now it turns into like do you go full circle again back to some other habits mm -hmm. which you did yeah okay for sure and you know there's enough time between lessons where you start grooving stuff and the stuff starts to kind of go back to where it, it originally was yeah. not everything but yeah, yeah, yeah you know and that's normal so that setup is gold i mean that looks like a tour player so when he's saying tour player, what I look like address, basically what we did is shift this a little to the left for me so we could be a little more centered. This is kind of a little lower and we're just like right here. Yeah, the setup in itself just allows me to easily hit it to the right. It's the, it's the visor. Yeah, I get the visor it's power. The visor. For all the comments who <laughs> hate the visor. Hey, visor, <laughs> solid. Okay, um, now when you put power against things, so your side bend here was at 14-ish, mm -hmm. so it's definitely more on the higher end, which is good. Pressure, pretty good. Upper hub, so you shifted right. See the upper hub? Yeah. Congratulations, it's half an inch more right than the lower hub. When he's saying put pressure in the left with this a little uh, to the left than the upper hub, it's basically just like at the top, I'm landing left, but this, my upper body doesn't go with it. It's basically staying back and there's like a little bit of dissociation. Oh, I see. Ching. So like that, we should have that all day. Every single time. I see. Okay, okay, now that doesn't mean that your head's gonna be over here and your hips over here. That'd be ridiculous, yeah. okay? But it also doesn't mean to be here. I see. I like things to be kind of zeroed out. Yeah, yeah, okay? yeah. And you're able to do it under motion. So like there's two schools of thought over the, not to bore you with this, but like this is for learning. In the past, I always lived in try to keep everything centered. Yeah. Okay. And then the other side was move a lot. Mm -hmm. Like there was no in between. Yeah. I'm kind of in between now. Yeah. But I'm, I still have everybody looking centered. So mm -hmm. you look at my players, they're not moving all over the place, but they do shift pressure around. Okay. Because it matches the geometry. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the geometry gets worse if you don't do that. Yeah. So if you look at this, this is like perfect. So you get to the top. Like I said, 
things get kind of zeroed out, which you did. Yeah. Pressure shifts left, right? So yeah, yeah, yeah. boom, boom. Mm. And then I kind of want your head to be back a little bit more. See how your chest is forward there? Yeah. You kind of went like this. Okay. Even though you're pushing, which should make it go back. And then again, we're reiterating the flaw in the swing, which was getting it to the top, landing, and I was using this, uh, my upper body to get forward. So the really main thing that he really wants me to emphasize is to do um, landing on your left foot organically versus forcing it. The, the past problems was me getting here and trying to get in my left foot by doing this versus basically allowing that rotation to land organically, which is still like, again, dissociation. To me, like if I said this was a lesson on understanding where your centers need to be at certain times, mm -hmm. this is what this is. Okay. So um, if I wanted to hit the ball specifically low, yeah. I would do what you were doing and if I wanted to cut it. Mm. Okay. So that means that I would get all my centers forward and then I would just rotate open. Okay. That would make me hit it low because everything's forward. Yeah. And cutting it because everything's rotating to the left. Mm -hmm. So everything's low cut. Would you say like tour players do those configurations to hit certain shots or? Oh, 100%. Yeah. Okay, so, so, so. We, but you got to remember like, the, so there's a, there's a line here that we're yeah. dealing with. Okay. We have pros over here, amateurs over here. Yeah. yeah. And we live somewhere in between. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I said Wyndham Clark earlier, right? So Wyndham hits fades. Yeah. Okay. But if you left Wyndham alone and you said Wyndham just hit a shot, it probably wouldn't cut as much. It'd mm -hmm. probably be pretty straight. Yeah. And if you left him alone longer for a couple weeks, you'd probably start missing it left. Mm. Okay. That's a problem. Yeah. But you got to remember, he started when he was maybe four. I have no idea. Wyndham, sorry. Maybe you did. <laughs> but like maybe you're four or five. Yeah. Okay. So if you did that, you probably have a pattern that's more in like towards what you're doing or trying to do. Yeah. So a lot of juniors get their lower body going forward, head going back, and they hit out on it a bunch. Yeah. So if you do that, yeah, you're going to high draws. Yeah. Well, you don't want to hit buckling high 40 yard draws. You want to kind of tighten that up. So what tour players end up doing is they start kind of getting it back to zero or moving it slightly to the left. Mm -hmm. Now, not everybody, like most tour players don't hit cuts. They hit slight draws with their irons, but for the most part, they try to zero it out. Oh, okay. We don't want to live at zero. Yeah. We want to live on more of this. Okay. Ideally, because that's the opposite of what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let's do another one like that. Let's just try to feel like the upper hub, because it got right. Yeah. Stays more right as you land left and extend. Gotcha. On a tee as well. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I know we did this last time. Yep. Um But I shouldn't focus on like my wrists. Never. Uh, <laughs> I meant like the the whole thing where I'm like. With the supination. The yeah, the thing to get it closed. No, you're good right now. Yeah. Oh okay. Yeah, you're good. That wrist wasn't open. But what it's... was that feel you said in the beginning of this lesson? You're like instead of this. Don't go to it right now. Okay, just, I just, I know. <laughs> stop. I know, I'm the worst. Yeah, don't go to like, what are my hands doing? Okay, what are my hands doing it? So here's the problem. If you swing a driver at 126 miles per hour, yeah. and you're thinking about this, you're doing it wrong. Okay. Because you're not gonna go 126, you're gonna go 100. Yeah. Like you I just see. took all your energy out of it. So don't yeah. even think about it, okay? okay? Good. So these are the three things that you just master now. <laughs> yeah, 100%. <laughs> Got it. Well, because these things are reoccurring a little bit. Yeah. So yeah, I've kind of realized that. It's, so it's kind of like, and then for long irons, you said just more, a little bit more. Yeah. And then I'm, this shouldn't go back. So this should actually just stay. You should feel like it's staying forward. The uh, lower body should feel like it's staying forward, but, but you're it still... shouldn't go forward. No. Yeah. And then it just, this is a little more, more to the right. Center. Yep. And then pressure lands and so then head feel for you it'll feel like your head's going back as you're pushing up yeah exactly okay. all right i don't think i got it you'll figure this out yeah the good news is i'll be redundant and tell you the same thing over and over again until you get it yeah so. i feel like i get it i get it then I'll, I'll revert back and then i'll come here and it'll be good <laughs> it's okay it's golf okay so a little here. more forward oh yeah there you go and then boom 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 Boom. Oh. Way better. Way better. That was good? Way better. 
Look at that, not digging trenches anymore. Yeah. yeah. I kind of want to see, can I do it without a tee? Sure. And see what yeah. happens. <laughs> yeah. You do like jumping ahead, don't you? <laughs> no, <I> mean, <laughs> it's bad. <laughs> it's not bad, it's just normal human nature. You're fine. <laughs> Yep. So that was more rotational, not enough Greg Norman. So that means I was going like this? Yeah, yeah. That's why I have you on a T, so it kind of makes you kind of feel like you're going to clip it. Okay, got it. That's why a driver's so easy to hit. Yeah? Because you're not trying to hit down to make contact, it's hitting this way. So people get kind of like, they get drive, they drive it well and they have struggles with their three wood. Because yeah. a three wood, you got to hit about two down on it to make mm -hmm. contact. Yeah. So feel like it's on a T and you're gonna Greg Norman it. You're going wham that way. So upper body, good, land, now push. Yeah, that way, as much as you want. Come on, throw that thing back on a T. Yeah. Then I'll go over your drill. So you have your side bend, right side bend at setup, upper hub more to the right than the left, and then side bend and go vertical through the shot, finish to the right. Awesome. So see the launch? Yeah. See the launch was up? Now I know it pushed, but it was in the air. Mm -hmm. That means that you were more this way, okay? Now the face was just open on that. That's why it kind of stayed over there. So with that launch, that's, I'm hitting it, I feel like I'm hitting it up rather than hitting it down. Yeah, that's your feel. Oh, I see. But it, I am hitting it down or? Oh yeah. Oh, okay. It seems like I'm like hitting it like a driver right now. Uh, you need to feel that. Oh, really? Yeah, because if you think about it, your concept of down is like this. See, I'm kind of like turning left and hitting down on it. Yeah. That's not good. If I'm this way, my handle's still forward, right? Yeah. So I'm hitting out and still hitting down, but club's going down even if my handle's going up. Yeah. Do you understand yes. that concept? Yes. Are you sure? Because <laughs> that one's important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So think of this. My, I'm coming through, I'm pushing up, the handle's going up, but the club's still going down. So yeah. it feels like you're hitting up on it, but the club's still going down into the ground. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yes. Yeah, do as much of that as you want. Gotcha. And it's getting open though, I guess that's like the big problem after this stuff. Yeah, don't don't worry about it. Keep the path right. Okay. We'll, we'll get to that, if need be. Good. Kind of off center hit, but that was good. Yeah. Do one more time. Because I want to do your drill. It uh, disintegrates. <laughs> it's this like one. my seven iron. <laughs> Here, I'll do that for you. Do you feel like um, when the Greg Norman thing, it's like how long until I go up? Like, is it like pretty quick? In pretty the early. instant I feel it, like it's push. Like yeah, yeah, really Rather early. than like this. Yeah, no, very early. You want okay. it to kind of go bam immediately. It's all right. Okay, Oops. one more. Is that because I'm just going way too over? Uh, no, you just too fast and your head got ahead of it on that one. Yeah. So I want your head more to the right. Okay, so at the top, your head is way, way, way over here. I'm gonna show you your drill here after this shot. So what's the feeling on the back swing? You get way overdone. Heads to the right there. Then now gonna... push vertically and side bend. Like yep, that. and feel your arms go out that way. Yep. Okay. I'm just gonna try to do this. It's not 150 miles now. Good, good. Ball more forward. Okay, you ready? Yeah. Boom. <laughs> that was perfect. Okay. Um, I'm not going to say screw your drill. That was perfect. But I'm going to show you what your drill is. Okay. okay. So let's imagine you're at home. Okay. Mm -hmm. I want you to have good feedback loops. Yeah. So like when you hit a shot, you kind of have an understanding where you're going. And also like where you're measuring it. Okay. So take your address for a minute. And I'm actually going to take your club. Because okay. I don't want you to have much... For this time being, I don't want you to have much awareness of the club. I want yeah. your body to have awareness. Just imagine that this is a door jam, okay, mm -hmm. right at home. So go ahead and make a backswing for me. Good. So you're going to feel like this is a little bit to the right, okay? okay. Now, we're going to keep this here as your pressure lands left. Good. Now let's imagine now the door jam's here. There's a wall here. Start to feel side bend and vertical. Slowly, good, good, good. Now see how your head is staying, keep going on this tilt, and your arms are staying on the wall. Okay. So your arms didn't go this way to the wall, they stayed on the wall. What's a door jam? So the part where the door opens and closes. Oh, okay. Got yeah, it. so like you put your head on a door jam, 
and then you feel like my head stays there. As I'm pushing vertically in side bend, I can keep my head there and my arms stay on the wall right here. Yeah, Got so this it. is going that way, I opposed see. to over here. See how your head moved off the wall? Oh yeah. I don't want that. So it's basically, I'm like on the, on the wall more or less. Yeah, yeah. So like people say, well, don't keep your head down. Yeah. It's like I can keep my head in the inclination. Yeah. Like I can keep my head down. Well, I can't do that, but my head's in the inclination. See yeah. my eyes? Yeah. So you're releasing your head. I never want you to go look at the target because that pulls your chest open. Yeah. That's we don't want to do. do that. I do that okay. a lot. So let's do that again. So here's a door jam. So make sure you turn behind it. Left shoulder goes behind it. Good. Pressure lands left. Good. Now here's the wall. Push up. There you go. See that? Arms are higher. Push your hips under you. Oh, okay. And then you're it. there. Gotcha. That's where I need you. Okay, got it. So that's a lot more vertical. Yeah. Opposed to around. Yeah, so it's kind of just like, like yeah, all yeah, yeah, rather yeah. than, I kind of do. You go, you wipe it. Yeah. <laughs> that way, yeah. Okay. That's the pattern you need. So like if you looked at Tiger Woods, mm -hmm. okay, this would be a good image. Yeah. There's a really good picture on the internet of him at Pebble Beach with his hips open, shoulders look square. Mm-hmm. They're not, they're actually open probably about 25 degrees. Yeah. But he's tilted. Okay. And he's like this. So this is open, he's here as he's hitting. He is not this way, okay? He's like this. He's open and his shoulders are tilted so his rib cage looks closed to square. See that? Now if you keep your head here and push up, that makes a lot of sense. Gotcha. Within this sequencing of the body that you just mentioned, like what causes the divot basically going downward through the ball. Yeah, so, okay. Let's look at the golf swing inherently. Go ahead and stand like right here for a minute. Me? Yeah. Okay, so the low point of my swing or the bottom of the arc is around my left shoulder. Yeah. Okay, so that's like every golf teacher kind of knows that. Yeah. The low point is not where the ball is. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the ball with an iron is behind the low point. So I have this ball right now. If this is my left shoulder, this is about five to six inches behind the low point. So as I'm coming down and pressure's left, I'm pushing up. My handle is already ahead of the ball. See that? So the club gets hit or the ball gets hit down to that low point. See that? So it's being the divots right in front of the ball and then the low point is here, mm. right? But the handle is, is it going down the line or is it going up? Up up yeah right it's not being driven forward it's being driven up oh okay right <laughs> yeah you're not trying to pull it forward yeah exactly i guess like my question then is like we're starting obviously at ball line here and yep. then it's coming down if i didn't do anything it's just going to come here again yep. so the thing that's causing it to dig or like go through the ball is pressure being left and you pushing up Right, and you being more forward with your lower body. Oh, got it. But then this is because I'm a lower that it's going to well, be. Well, you will be lower, but you're already pushing up. Oh, I see. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, I guess it's weird that when it's pushing up, why would it go down? Like, well, that's a long conversation. <laughs> so think of it this way. Yeah. Okay. So if I pull up on the grip, where does the club head want to go? Down. Bingo. <laughs> oh, okay. That's a simple answer. <laughs> okay, got okay. it, got it, got You're it. Not, if I drive the handle down, where's the club stay? Up. Up. Oh, okay, got it. It's not, yeah, yeah, yeah I got it, okay. You're because thinking like, of it from mechanics. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking like I'm bringing it up, but it's actually just like, it's like The a, vertical force of your body pushing up yeah. will lower the head. Okay, got it, that makes yeah. sense. Okay. And it's important because like if my pressure's back and I try to do that, yeah, I'm gonna hit the ground. Yeah. But pressure gets forward and then you push up. Got it, okay, that sounds good. And then, so just to recap on the, this, I don't want to get out of like, no, like this, it's kind of just like, um, this and I'm just stopping right there. Yeah. Like, you stop and then like, you turn like this and then boom. And then push up. up. Yeah. And that's that. why all I put into this. Well, that's the problem, right? So <laughs> yeah, I need you to be like sequentially in those three phases. I don't want you to add wrist stuff to it. I don't yeah. think that's going to be suited for what you're doing because once you do that, you lose part one and two and three. 
Yeah. So when you start thinking about your hands, those things all go away. Yeah. Okay. That's what was happening because I was trying to, because uh, a lot of my misses were getting open. Okay. So I was like, all right, so maybe it's the wrist that's Were they you. slicing or were they just pushing? They're just uh, pushing. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so they probably were. Yeah, but yeah. you probably also were going this way to it and the face doesn't want to close. <coughs> if you're swinging left, you're not going to close the face. Wait, what do you mean by that? So if, if your path is going left, yeah. why would you ever close the face? Because you're going to hit a pull. Yeah. So that's Oops. probably what was going on. But if you're swinging up and out to the right, you'd probably shut the face down. Otherwise, you'd hit a block. What is a block? Like a push. Oh, okay. So think of it this way. I'm going to stand right here. Yeah. So I have a face problem. Yeah. That's like what goes on in my head. Yeah. So I'm assuming it is. Mm -hmm. So if I come down and I supinate and shut the face, the ball's going to go over there because my path is left. Yeah. But if I do what you're trying to do, which is push up and swing out and yeah. side bend, I can actually close the face now. Mm. Whereas before you wouldn't do that because you're swinging too far left, which yeah. is what you were doing. So I guess the one thing I was doing is because with the new setup, it was always going right. Uh -huh. But then since it was opening, um, what's this called? Since it was like getting pushed, yep. I would like try to turn more left. Yeah. So then. And then you got to now. You, now you're yeah, putting no. slice mechanics in. Yeah. So. So here's what we're doing. We'll keep yeah. it simple. Keep it simple. Side bend at setup. Mm -hmm. Okay. Upper hub fills more to the right. Mm -hmm. Pressure lands left. Okay, that's the, that's the two major things. Then it's side bend and vertical force. Yeah. And if that occurs, wham, the club goes out to the right. And then the face will want to shut. Oh, it'll just shut naturally? It should. Okay, got it. If but you don't, we can talk about it. Okay, that's what I was, I was, gonna say. I was like, what if it does? <laughs> yeah, don't worry about pushes. that. You're it's okay. Like, just do all that and yeah. go back. And not try to add on anything else. Don't add anything else to it. <laughs> Definitely don't try to do this. Okay. Okay. Can't do. Can't try to do it with your hands. That was like weeks of doing that. It's like, okay. Whatever. It's all right. I have a cell phone. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All yeah. right. Very, very good. Hey, yo, Jerome here. I bet you would love this video right over here. The one with that other thumbnail. Just checked with Greg Norman. He is also watching. He's also in there. <laughs> See you over there.